We are back at the Boise 123 Criterium to take a look at this race from a different angle. Uh, we've covered this race before and how we got on the podium. Um, you can check that link out in the upper corner. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover all the team tactics that Team Cliff Bar used to set me up for that podium. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward four corner crit. Um, it's the middle of a hot afternoon and we're going to jump in with Nate and I uh, as I attack on the first lap of the race. So in this one, it's going to be all Pete's footage and then we also have footage from one of your teammates? One of my teammates, Connor. Um, he's the rear facing cam and then we're also going to have some footage from USA Crits uh, for the final, which is pretty awesome. Dude, so you went hard right away. <laughs> uh, yeah, so usually you know how we always say don't attack on the first lap. Um, but since there were those three teams with a bunch of guys, we wanted them on the back foot right from the beginning. Um, we felt like we could kind of control the race and do a bunch of things um, to make everybody else have to work pretty hard. And this is all different. When you have six guys, <clears throat> yeah. like you can't just all sit in. No, it, I mean, that's not using your team. That's not using your team. And, and we want to tire out everybody else. Um, this race, if it's really hard the whole time, it, it's... Uh, everybody has problems at the end so yeah so that, do you guys do that a lot in races just try to make it like these flat or technical races make it really hard as as hard as we can make them pretty much mm -hmm. um and is that through acceleration or yeah usually uh this race we did a good job of always having someone off the front and so then you're just forcing someone to chase all the time so everybody's uh, all the teammates are hanging out you know resting resting and someone's working really hard like the first five minutes is i was off the front um and yeah, it's just it just sets everybody up to know that you're there to race and everybody better start chasing. And for the team tactics, uh, for USA Crits, that's the, it's like the premier crit racing series mm -hmm. in the country. Yep, and last sure. year, you guys won the team competition, Team Cliff Bar. Yeah, we did. Anyways, it's, you guys are up, mm -hmm. like you guys are at the US national level, you're yep. right up there with everybody. Yeah, we try to be, yep. yeah. Um, so, I, <laughs> it's not very exciting. It's just me off the front. Um, but what you can't see behind is that uh, the two other major teams are just chasing right from the gun. And so we want to start using up their guys right from the beginning. Um, but what we're going to kind of do is jump into all the successful team tactics we implement over the course of this race. So here we're on Connor's camera. And as you can see, as soon as uh, they notice I'm about to come back, JD starts uh, to, to light it up and then um, everybody flies past me and all of the teammates are initiating the attack so that we're still on the front foot. And um, So you the, they don't wait for you to get caught, they do it before you get caught, yeah. but you're close enough. Always before you get caught so that the, the pace stays super high and I also get that rest. So as I'm kind of drifting back through the field, I don't have to worry about a move going up the road without me in it or without any teammates. And I get to rest for that 30 seconds while the, while the pack stretches out. How far back do you drift back into the pack? I'm pretty notorious for drifting really far back. Um, I, don't, I don't have as much trouble moving up and down a field. Um, and, but some people shouldn't, uh, shouldn't drift too far back. And if the pace is really high, if it's strung out single file, you do want to fight um, to not to not slow it down too much. Looks like you just had another teammate go. Yeah, so again, uh, AJ attacks um, and Connor follows the wheels. So now we have two guys. And that's kind of that, that was kind of the ongoing goal is if we could, if it was a solo rider, it was OK. But if it was a, if it was a bigger group, we wanted two riders in the break. Um, and you'll see the pace just stays super high. Um, and there's a Legion guy chasing you back. You saw there had to close down the gap. So that's what you're saying is making the other team tired. Yeah, and anybody who's strong, uh, there was a bunch of single uh, guys racing without teammates like Dante from Legion. And um, they we wanted to also get them tired, right? They don't want to miss the moves. And so they're going to have to do a lot of bridging. And uh, it just makes the race so much harder. Yes. So here we have Connor um, attacking into the slowest corner of the race. And as you can see, our teammate is on the front. So he obviously doesn't pedal hard through the corner. Connor gets the gap into the, the kind of uh, really fast corners. Um, and just like that, he has 10 seconds, right? And this is the this is the easiest piece of teamwork that I don't see teams do. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike's Bikes does this, I've talked about it in Northern California, but if somebody, if your teammate goes, just let them go. Stop yeah. pedaling. Stop pedaling. Uh, they don't even have to go hard. And everyone else kind of like, um, especially in the lower categories, they just relax and they don't realize what's going on until mm -hmm. 
five seconds later and they have to close this huge gap. Right, and as you can see, um, Bob's Bicycles is the one chasing it back, um, and they were another big team. Connor rides through the guy off the front, um, and this is pretty much the beginning of Connor's like 45 minute breakaway. Um, he just keeps- He's keeps, known for that, right? Yeah, he's, he's a big, He's a great breakaway rider. Um, he was kind of who, if we could choose who we wanted to be in the break, Connor would be one of them. So um, we felt pretty good about this. And as you can see, the pack is just strung out single file, but Connor just keeps riding through through everybody. When does Connor know to like give up? Like, does it? Does he just keep going? Uh, so that's the pretty amazing part is over the course of this race, you'll see that Connor knows that if n there's no teammates around him, he's he has to keep the pace high. So looks back there's no teammates there so he jumps on this move and uh follows the wheels that okay. way we always have someone up the road so here you can see the packs just starting to catch up again but uh connor realizes there's no teammates right there so he attacks again with our teammate on the front just sits there just sits there um this was the slowest speed turn so if you can accelerate you get the speed differential easier. Yeah, right into the corner. Right into the corner. Um, and then, as you can see, Nick is still on the front. Um, Connor bridges up. This is Jake, uh, another strong rider. Uh, he raced the pro race later. Um, yeah, you know, the idea being Connor was always paying attention. He had enough fitness to always be at the front of the race. So that was, you know, it's it's such an important skill. And then everybody else has to chase. And it, it just kept us so much fresher. Uh, so. We're gonna jump to my camera. So this pretty much saved my race. Uh, this is Jazz giving me a bottle. I just asked him <laughs> if he had any water. Um, like I said, it was 100 degrees. Uh, I had sort of a non-ideal start to this race. Wait, uh, before, can we just talk about that for a second? Because look back the way that he does it. He doesn't look back at you. He just puts his hand out. He's yep. being safe. He's being safe. Other riders, like, they'd, like, turn around and try to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, do this, people, if you're going to do it. Yeah, this is so handy, and he can set up for the corner exactly how he wants. It's up to me to grab the water bottle. If I don't grab it, it's okay. He just still takes it around the corner. Um, this is definitely the way to hand off a water bottle to your teammate, and you always hand it off to the person behind you. You never hand it forward. Um, it just never works. That's great. And see how, how, how so there's no one in front of him. Yeah. His, wide, his arm is so wide that uh, you don't have to get really close and get dangerous. Right. And he doesn't only have one hand on the handlebar, so if you were to bump like his handlebars or hook, mm -hmm. it could be dangerous. It could be dangerous. Okay, sorry for <laughs> the interruption, but it's you guys are just so good and people need to see this. <laughs> so I grabbed the bottle, but I was cooked. Um, and probably that first five minutes off the front was a little harder than I wanted to go. Um, but I remember this middle portion of the race, all I was focusing on was trying to take it easy and cool down. Um, that's well, a nice part with teammates, right? Yeah, he, uh, there was someone. Connor was off the front, so this is where you, if you watch the the full race, there's a lot of me talking to my teammates and a lot of us still talking in the race about the way that Connor is riding off the front and the group he is with, um, how we can kind of take advantage of what we're doing in the field at the same time. Because the you guys. <laughs> So you guys kind of know what you're going to do, but things change like on the fly, right? So you're yeah. constantly talking. Yep. And if you're not talking to your teammates, you don't, nobody's aware of all these different things that are happening. And so even if you, every time you ride by a teammate, if you ask, are you good? Um, that's a great start that you don't have to do, do a bunch of race tactics. You just say, are you good? And they can say yes or no, because if they say no, it changes the plan. Or if they say yes, it changes the plan. So if you say no, they, they know that they're not going to rely on you to do one of these attacks and one of them should go. Exactly. Okay. So as you can see, we have one guy trying to bridge up to Connor um, and JD does a good job of keeping him close enough so that either one of us can jump across to him. But actually JD is riding strong enough that he's, he's stringing off the front of the group. Um, and as you'll see, what, what ends up happening is JD gets a little gap going into the back straight. And um, rather than uh, pull the whole field. He steps on it a little bit. And so then another team has to chase also. So as you can see, the, the race is kind of breaking up. JD doesn't stop. And other teams are having to work at the same time. It doesn't look like it there, but I promise those light blue jerseys are actually doing work in addition to. And so not only is JD pulling back the single rider, but another team is doing work at the same time, which is pretty ideal. And that single rider is trying to bridge? Yeah, it's trying to bridge across and he's not going to make it, but we want to keep him close enough that either someone, someone else can jump across. So as you can see, JD's in no man's land, which is perfect because the other team is chasing and we're, 
yeah. either getting getting ready to jump across or if if they give up, JD's going to be with that guy exactly, and then you can have two people in the breakaway, or else they all have to kind of. Uh, They'll have to use energy. Exactly. So as you can see, it works perfectly. So that's another reason to pay attention while you are pulling on the front and make sure you're either bridging or not pulling the race. But yeah, just like that, JD was pulling on the front for half a lap and then makes it up to the single rider without really pulling anybody with him. That's cool. So this is a good example of, again, the race slows down. Connor knows that he attacks into the slow portion of the race uh, through the start finish line. Um, he skips the riders up the road, which is exactly what you want to do. You don't want to you don't want to bring anybody with you if you can help it. Um, and look, he's got ten seconds. You know, again the same corner, same corner. And so that's that's one of the really on a really basic four corner course. There's still better times to attack than others. And this is a great example of if you if you time your attack exactly right, you're just going to execute so much better than everybody else. So. Uh, this is again when Connor is off the front by himself. No one's no one's with him, and so we just get to sit in the field and hang out. So, now, do people want to bridge up to him? Is he could he go solo? Does he ever go solo, or is he waiting for someone to bridge up to him? Um, How much effort is he putting out here? He puts a lot. I think he gets a he gets a full straight, so he probably gets twenty five or thirty seconds by himself. Um, and then some of the field gets motivated, and and that's what we'll jump up to. Let's jump to twenty six thirty on my camera. So here's what's happening in the field with, when Connor's off the front. Um, we have two strong riders, one from the one from the major team, Bob's Bicycles, and then Jake. Um, and they're putting in a lot of work on the front. Like you can see, I'm sitting third wheel. We're going 31 miles an hour. Um, they're trading pulls, and what I'm doing is just forcing them to get back into the back into the rotation right away. And I'm also not letting anyone buy me. Um, so between those two things. Uh, it's it's two guys versus one, but at least I'm tiring them out and I'm not giving them any more help. Um, but what ends up happening is they pull so hard that they pull a group of like ten riders off the front. Oh wow! Uh, and you know Connor's still up the road, um, and we're sort of letting these. If there's uh, one or two riders that go off the front, we're usually not marking them. Um, here I think is Scott Waters actually. So there was some solo bridgers. Um, the whole race was hard and strung out, and there was a lot of single attacks. Um, but like you can see, you just force them to do all the work. Uh, and so the strong guys are getting tired, and I'm getting that free ride. Uh, and this is, I think, where the group, if you look in the live stream, this is where the group of us is kind of off the front of the main field. And these guys are still working hard, but Connor still has 20 or 30 seconds on us. So it's perfect. And then as soon as Connor gets caught, you're going to do another attack? Mm -hmm. Always, right? Yeah. <laughs> so here's the same two guys on the front. They've been doing this for five minutes. We had that little bit of a gap, and you can see they're both looking behind, like, who's going to help? Um, they got tired. They got tired. And uh, there's still one, like we said, there's one solar rider off the front all the time. So here's where I accelerate to the front, and then I just slowly wind down. So I'm doing 280 watts, 270, 260. And the whole goal is slowing down into the corner so that we take the corner with less speed. And it's sort of like punishing them for not keeping the speed high or someone else coming around me. And I actually get two corners worth um, going slower. So it probably just added a couple seconds to Connor's, Connor's gap. And that's, that's enough sometimes, right, mm -hmm. to, to win. So you went from 31 down to 21. Yep. Um, and then there's a counter from, yep. is that your cousin countering you? Uh, no, that's Glenn, another oh, Reno Glenn. guy. Yeah, okay. But then I have fresh teammates who are ready to cover everything. So yep. I, I sacrifice myself and I'll have to speed back up to get up to speed to get back in with the group. But, but you're letting it fill in though. So that's mm -hmm. what I was saying. You're, you're drifting back. You don't have to be part of it because you have so many teammates up there. Exactly. That you, it's really not a big acceleration for you. Mm -mm. It, I took a whole straight to get back up to speed, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's, I mean... It, for the teams who, if you do have a teammate off the front, it's worth it to punish some, if the groups who are trying to chase. Just yeah. that one or two seconds makes a difference sometimes. You weren't messing them up either. They were just like looking at you. Mm -hmm. You're like, fine, I'll slow it down. Yeah, I just rode to the front and nobody passed me. Yeah. It's a big wide course. Yeah. There's plenty of room. Anyone could. Anyone could. Uh, and look, and then it, it widens out again because no one's working. Yeah, slowed down again. So here we're back on Connor's camera, and uh, over the course of the last 20 minutes, a couple guys bridged up. Um, again, we we wanted to we wanted Connor to have company. We didn't want him to have to solo, and the strong guys just make it work. So the kind of the three or four strongest guys in the race are all up up off the front. Um, but once the group gets a little bigger, it's harder to keep 
keep the collaboration high. And so now that it's six guys, um, you can see it just doesn't work. Uh, people start, start worrying about what's going to happen. Um, and so Connor looks back, sees that there's no teammates, and um, you know, gets on the gas again. Because the whole goal is we want someone off the front all the time. And as they sit up, Connor's like, yep, I have to go. Uh, and then he punishes them for not working. And so then all of a sudden, again, we have someone off the front. There's a, a chase group in the middle, and then the peloton's going to catch them. Okay, Connor's superhuman. Yes. So, all, so they just, they, Connor was off the front, but they all just had to bridge. So they're yeah. tired. They're looking at each other, and then Connor goes again, and they keep looking at each other mm -hmm. to, uh, like, who's going to pull this back? And it's late enough in the race where you yeah. get that hesitation. And Connor did a good job when, when he got caught by the, some of the fresher riders, I saw him r rotate not quite, not as often as when, when, as he could. Um, and that's just, it's, it's allowed. If you're off the front solo and a group of riders catch you, you get a little more freedom in the breakaway. Um, but the, as you can see, the strong guy, a couple strong guys are still there. So he still has company. He can still pull, but we're 42 minutes into the race and you know, Connor's been off the front for 30 minutes of the race probably wow it's like an hour long race hour long race so we're still back with connor um and as you can see as soon as guys stop working uh connor keeps the pace on so even though he's not working as hard as he could in the break if it slows down again the goal is to keep keep someone off the front so he's always countering himself even when the breakaway slows down and starts looking at each other he knows that his job is as someone off the front to keep the pressure on um and until someone, another teammate is in this group with him, then that, that sort of relieves him of the duty. So uh, I'm sure he's tired, I'm sure it's hard, but you just keep, keep the pressure on so that your teammates are getting the rest in the back. But so if this break succeeds though, how is he gonna win? Because he's doing uh, so much work. He's not actually doing as much work um, as keeping the pace high. So if it slows down, he slots in, but if, it, if it's just a normal rotation, he's not taking super long pulls, you, you do have to be a strong ri rider to do this, but... You mean if it slows down, he attacks? Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Um, or takes a longer or a faster pull, but the idea being uh, if overall workload, Connor's probably doing less, but... And you can kind of tell the, the field has been really close for the last 10 minutes. It just feels like they're going to get caught, so I would say he's, he's doing the right thing. And you can tell none of these guys are super fresh, um, and the field's just always right there. Yeah. So we're back on my camera, and as you can see, Connor's about to get caught, but Nick is there, ready, um, and leads up through the field. Uh, so again, it's been, it's, we've probably had one or two minutes of the race total without one of us off the front, um, and we never had anybody pulling on the front. Uh, and this is where I'm getting pretty tired. It's, it's near the end of the race, there's 10 minutes left. Um, covering all these kind of pace changes and stuff, it's hard and it's hot. So even though we haven't been doing a ton of work, it's still taking its toll on us. Um, but I'm going to let Nick go. Nick's a strong rider. I feel good with him being in a four-man breakaway. Um, and that's kind of the decision point, right? If you think that that rider can do well, that's when you do is you're opening up the gap. Mm -hmm. And you're getting rest. And I'm getting rest, and someone someone's always filling in. So, uh, yeah, the whole time we had we had this dynamic going of someone always being off the front and then the teammates filter up and are ready for the counterattack. That sums it up for using team tactics to attack the race. If you want to see how we set up my attack and how the fight for the podium shakes out, click the link in the top right corner. Thanks to USA Crits again for the footage. And if there's anything we missed, let us know in the comments below. I'm Nate. And I'm Pete. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs down and uh, let us know what you would do in the comments below. If you want more of these videos, please subscribe to us. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com.